It's no secret that I'm very bullish on real estate investment trusts. I regularly post videos on some of my favorite REIT investment opportunities and some of you will probably describe me as a REIT cheerleader. But I'm still objective enough to recognize that it's not all great in the REIT sector, it's not all sunshines and rainbows. On the contrary, there are many sectors of commercial real estate that are today facing significant challenges and this could cause some REITs to underperform going forward. Hey everyone, this is Yulcia, I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing in today's video I'm gonna give you some very bad news about the REIT sector I'm not even going to discuss the office sector here which we all know is suffering the impact of work from home but I'm gonna point out some other risks that you may have overlooked and yet you should keep your eye on but before I get into it could you please do me a huge favor and click the like button that really helped me a lot to grow this YouTube channel and also make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss any updates on some of my favorite REITs to buy today so the first bad news that I have for you here is that the apartment sector is today oversupplied. Apartment REITs did exceptionally well in 2021 and 2022 when the inflation was hot, interest rates were low and cap rates were compressing. This led property values to surge and investors earned huge returns. But this then attracted a lot of new capital to the sector, a lot of developers started building new apartment communities all over the place and especially in the Sunbelt markets where it's easy to get a building permit and to get started and as a result now we are dealing with oversupply as all these new development projects hit the market and are in their lease up phase. This is already reflected in the returns and the guidance of various apartment rates and especially those that focus on Sunbelt market. Mid America apartment communities, ticker symbol MAA, is the biggest Sunbelt apartment rate and it has guided to grow its same property NOI by a negative 0.7% in 2024. The coastal markets are doing a bit better, but even in this case, the growth is nothing to celebrate about. Avalon Bay communities has guided for 1% same property NOI growth in 2024. The problem here is that cap rates still remain very low in the apartment sector and if the growth remains so low going forward then these cap rates may compress further which would lead to a drop in property values. To take the example of BSR REIT which is a small apartment REIT that focuses on Texan markets its net asset value per share dropped by nearly 20% in 2023 because of cap rate expansion. And it seems that 2024 is going to be another difficult year and while things will likely get better in 2025, some more patience will be needed from apartment REIT investors. But to be clear, this doesn't mean that I'm bearish on apartment REITs. On the contrary, I'm quite bullish. I own quite a few of them because their valuations are very low and I don't expect this oversupply to last for much longer. The key here is to be selective and invest in specific apartment REITs that are less impacted. And I'm here referring to class B communities as an example, which are not in direct competition with the new supply and therefore they are still able to grow the same property NOI. The second piece of bad news is that the self-storage sector is also oversupplied at the moment. The pandemic was a huge tailwind for the self-storage sector because a lot of people were moving around, some older generations passed behind unfortunately and left a lot of stuff to be stored somewhere and then thirdly a lot of people also needed to make space for a home office as they started to work from home. This led to a boom in demand for storage space right as there was limited new supply hitting the market and this then led to rapidly growing rents and occupancy rates. But the issue is that this also attracted a lot of capital in the sector, developers starting building new self-storage facilities all over the place and now this demand is moderating as the world returns gradually back to normal. People are not moving as much anymore and then the vaccine are reducing COVID related death and then thirdly increasingly many also returning back to the office and don't see as much of a need for a home office anymore and so all of this is reducing the demand for self-storage space. As a result of this the average occupancy rate of the self-storage sector has now dropped to the low 90s which is the lowest occupancy rate in a decade and rental rates for new clients are also down double digit. Most self-storage rates like public storage, extra space storage and now expecting to see a slight decline in their FFO per share in 2024 and so despite seeing their share price drop quite a bit I think that the valuations today still aren't low enough to warrant an investment in them. But again here if you're selective you can still find some very compelling investment opportunities and in the case of self-storage the best investments are today in foreign markets in my opinion. I just recently highlighted the big yellow group which is the leader in the UK. I'll put the link to a video in the description of this video. 
Then the third piece of bad news is that rent growth is now moderating also in the industrial property sector, which until recently was the strongest performing sector of commercial real estate. The pandemic brought a huge shift in the consumption of goods instead of services, and this then led to a significant boost in demand for industrial space. This then attracted again a lot of capital into the sector, and property developers started building new industrial properties all over the place, and as a result, we should now see the highest level of new supply hitting the market market in 2024 and 2025. This is resulting in a slight drop in occupancy rates in most cases and the rent growth is now also slowing down. But again, there are still some opportunities, you just need to be selective. We think that the best options today are in secondary and tertiary markets, which are not so heavily impacted by the oversupply and also in last mile infill locations of rapidly growing sunbelt markets that enjoy significant barriers to entry. A good example of a read that specializes in such locations is East Group Properties. It's a read that we own in our portfolio at High Yield Landlord. If you want to access our entire portfolio, you can join us for a two-week free trial. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. The fourth bad news is that the last two inflation reports have suggested that inflation could be a bit stickier than what we previously thought, and so this could also push any potential interest rate cuts further into the future. This is not the end of the world, but it's still bad news for the more rate-sensitive property sectors like net leases and ground leases, which typically have limited rent escalations and very long lease terms. A good example of that will be realty income, O-stock, which is quite popular among REIT investors, but if inflation remains high and interest rates are in cuts, realty income will face some headwinds in the coming years as its interest expense will go up and it won't be able to adjust its rates materially higher to compensate for that. And then the next bad news is that the healthcare property sector is still suffering the lingering issues of the pandemic. Hospitals especially were hit really hard because for a while elective surgeries were getting delayed or cancelled and at the same time the healthcare labor costs really went through the roof and as a result a lot of the operators of hospitals started to lose money and still struggle to make their rent payments today. As a result the biggest hospital rate which is called Medical Properties Trust, ticker symbol MPW, is today suffering significantly because two of its biggest tenants including Steward and Prospects are struggling to pay for for their rent. Bad news number six, many of the loans of mortgage rates are today underwater. The issue here is that a lot of mortgage rates lend a lot of money in 2022 when property values were very high as a result of the low interest rates and low cap rates. But now interest rates have risen, as you know, cap rates have expanded. As a result, these properties have lost in value. And so the LTV might have been reasonable before at, let's say, 60 to 70 percent. But now that's much closer to 100 percent, leaving little margin of safety for the lender. Moreover, many of these loans also had variable interest rates and so when interest rates surged, it obviously led to a surge in the interest expense of the borrowers and in many cases they have not been able to expand rents enough to make up for it and so now they are very close to defaulting on their loans. Just recently, this forced KKR Real Estate Finance, which is a commercial mortgage rate, to slash its dividend in half and I think that we will see many more dividend cuts over the coming quarters. It wouldn't surprise me if Arbor Realty as an example cuts its dividend that's a very popular mortgage rate that many of you often ask me about on this channel and what I've said is that I think that the common equity is still too risky but I think that the preferred equity is potentially quite opportunistic. Then the seventh bad news is that the cost of capital of REITs is still so high that most of them are not able to grow accreditably. Because of this last year REITs raised far less equity than they did in 2022 as an example and as a result their growth rate is now slowing down in 2024. The best example example of this is perhaps Realty Income, which has historically been able to acquire a lot of properties and grow its FFO per share by a mid-single digit growth rate. But this year, they are only guiding for very little acquisitions. I think it was about five times less than last year. And this is simply because their cost of equity is too high. And so if you adjust for their recent acquisition of Spirit Realty Capital, they are only expecting a roughly 2% growth rate in their FFO per share. And I'm still not done. The eighth bad news is that a lot of commercial real estate loans will mature in 2024 and 2025 and this could cause chaos in the entire commercial real estate sector. 
I'll put a chart on the screen where you'll see that a lot of loans will need to be refinanced in the near term and if borrowers fail to do so this could lead to a lot of property defaults and potentially further expansion in cap rates. This is a big issue for over leveraged private equity players like Blackstone, Brookfield, KKR which typically use quite a bit more leverage than your traditional rates. Fortunately read balance sheets are today the strongest they've ever been, their LTVs are just around 35% on average, debt maturities are well staggered and relatively long and therefore I think that most REITs will be just fine. They won't be heavily impacted really by these refinancings. However, it could still indirectly impact them because if many private equity landlords default on their properties, this could lead to dropping property prices. On one hand, this you could see this negatively if you're short-term oriented, but on the flip side, if you're long-term oriented, this could be a great opportunity for these conservatively financed REITs to pick up the pieces from over-leveraged landlords at low valuations. After listening to all of this, you may be wondering and what's the point of even investing in REITs today? And it's actually pretty simple. The best opportunities are made during times of crisis and today the market sentiment for REITs is very low and as a result, valuations are very opportunistic. It is true that some REITs are suffering but there are over 1,000 REITs worldwide. They're investing in over 20 different property sectors and so it's natural that there's going to be some winners and some losers but the interesting thing is that the REIT market has now beaten down every single REIT, the good, the average and the bad and as a result, there are some great buying opportunities in today's market. According to a recent study by Principal Asset Management, REITs are currently priced at their lowest valuations since the great financial crisis and we now have many of these big private equity players like Blackstone which are very sophisticated real estate investors start to accumulate REITs hand over fist. Blackstone alone has bought over 30 billion worth of REITs over the past years and just recently they closed another acquisition which was Tricon Residential. We actually profited quite a bit from this transaction at high yield landlord because they paid a large premium relative to the last share price. So despite all of this bad news, I remain very bullish and I continue to accumulate more REITs month after month because I follow this sector for over a decade now and I've rarely seen valuations this low. I of course cannot time the market but I know that historically it's always been a good idea to buy real estate when it's been priced at a low valuation and I don't think that this time will be any different. Now if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio you can join High Yield Landlord which is my REIT newsletter for two week free trial. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. This will give you direct access to my entire REIT portfolio at no cost. You can cancel in your first 14 days and you won't be charged anything. Otherwise once more if you could please click the like button that really helped me a lot. Thank you so much. Share my next one. Bye-bye.